For me, hiking isn't just about seeing pretty landscapes. It has evolved into a way of seeing myself. Out here, everything that is unnecessary is stripped away. What's left is the truth. I found that the harder the hike is, the more truth is revealed. Which is why I chose one of the hardest routes in America for my third long distance hike. I'm Mike Coronella. I am the co-founder or co-creator of the Hey Duke Trail. Um, the first trip we did was 20 years ago. Uh, we went through a bunch of places that literally we couldn't find anybody who could tell us if you could get from point A to point B. So we had a lot of wiggle room involved in case we had to turn around, in case we got lost. We didn't have GPSs. We found the uh, seven and a half minute topo maps were wrong a lot out here. They'd never been ground truth. So anyway, so we get to Zion and Backpacker Magazine ended up doing an article about that walk. And they're like, so are you gonna make this a trail? So that's when it became the Hey Duke Trail. But it's hard, you know, logistically it's very difficult. You guys are gonna deal with that. Yeah, we'll figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> All right, day one and mile one on our trek across the Colorado Plateau. 800 miles on the Hey Duke Trail. We're starting here just outside of Arches. My friends and I got dropped off at the edge of Arches National Park, where the Hey Duke Trail begins. This desert terrain was totally new to us, and we didn't quite know what we were getting ourselves into. I'm starting with four other friends. Behind me is Travis. Yo, yo. Hi, Travis. <laughs> then Sarah. Did I find and that Ashley. One, These three are just hiking through Arches with us. But then after that, I'm continuing on with the infamous Fitty Shrimp. We've got a history together from the PNT. Hi. And a little bit from Youper Tours. Youper Tours, episode four, the Fitty Shrimp episode. Check it out. He thinks it's the best one. On these long distance trails, a person begins to live a different life. To reinforce this, through hikers often give each other trail names based off of a personality trait or something that happened on the trail. Fitty Shrimp got his name on the Appalachian Trail. Then when we hiked the Pacific Northwest Trail together, he gave me my trail name, Money Shot. If we accept these trail names, they stick with us for life. I've, I've teetered between two, I've teetered between 1.5 and about four on the Stoke level in preparation for this thing. But I gotta tell you, I'm at a solid seven today. Oh, that's good. Solid seven on the Stoke meter. Yeah. So, uh, we're doing Stokes this year. There are no trail markers on the Hay Duke. There isn't even a trail most of the time. All we have are topographical maps, a GPS, and a guidebook to navigate. Almost immediately, we ran into some problems. We were supposed to camp down here last night. Couldn't find a way down. And we actually found a decent spot in that wash to yeah. camp. It wasn't I would bad. say that the stoke level was a little bit lower last night. Yeah. <laughs> This morning, it's definitely out up from last night. And the, sun was, <laughs> yeah. the sun was shining. That brought the stoke level up a little bit. And that might be the entrance. And I think we found the only possible way down into this canyon. Stoke level restored. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the best way is to go down there a little bit, and there's that rock right there. And then we'll just mosey our way straight down, I think. Oh, Jesus. We're just moseying, it's no big deal. It's, it's just a walk in the park, come on! <laughs> yeah, baby! I've got a fear of heights. It's bad. And that was not one of my favorite things ever that I've done. <laughs> I don't know why I'd hike, because inevitably I'm gonna run into this. Yeah. 
Hi, I'm Fiddy Shrimp and this is Hiker Hints. When your water bag springs a leak, and it will, don't throw it away. Just cut the top of it off and use it as a scoopy tool. I'm Mr. Scoopy Tool. Okay, now we can do it. It's the middle of day three and we're done with arches. Now we get a cheeseburger and beer. Yep. That's exactly why. Unlike the Pacific Crest Trail or the Appalachian Trail, which have thousands of hikers every year, there were only about 20 hikers on the Hayduke in 2018. Usually the only time I saw them was when we were resupplying in town. We all come from a variety of backgrounds, but we all seem to be out here for similar reasons. I go by the trail name number two, which is Pound Sign Two. My name is Big Wave Dave, that's my trail name. Yeah, my name is Lucas, I don't have a trail name yet. I haven't done a big trail yet, so this is my first two hike of anything, so. Yeah, I got mine on the PCT this past summer because I have the ULA Ohm, and this one guy's like, oh, you're that Ohm boy, and I kind of liked it, so I took it. <laughs> I was sitting at Forrester Pass on the PCT, and got pretty bad nose bleeding. So I just plugged my nose with toilet paper. And this old guy I met in Kennedy Meadows just saw me and was like, oh yeah, now I have a trail lamp for you. And, and I had no idea what it means. They gave me the trail lamp plug and I was like, okay. I'm Sonic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Peacock. I'm Beans. My trail name is Scoops. It's from the PCT last year. The gist is that I have strong feelings about Raisin Bran cereal and the arbitrariness of the scoop as a unit of measurement. And I think that when they switched from one scoop of raisins to two scoops of raisins, they probably didn't change the amount of raisins. They probably just changed the scoop size. Alright, we are on our way out of Moab. But now that our friends are gone, it's just Fiddy and I and it's starting to feel like a real through hike heading towards Canyonlands. Candyland, yeah! <laughs> Living the good life. Section one, let's see. I broke a pole. I uh, popped a ligament in my knee. That's gonna be an issue pretty much late in every day, I think. The road walking the dust from the road walking. Other than that, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, not bad. I think we've got some gnarly stuff coming up in the next couple days. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm just not thinking about it that much. <laughs> just do, don't think. Fiddy's in denial. After about three days of road walking, we are finally going cross country. Just left the dirt road to drop down into Lockhart Canyon. Oh shit. <laughs> I don't know man. Ease it down slowly. It seems so slippery though. All right, you're almost there. Almost on the rock. Almost on the rock. Huh? A little more. Right there. Like an inch more there. Okay. Alright, that stuff's pretty loose. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. It's, it looks like nothing. From here it does, you're right. <laughs> From up there it looks a lot worse. Yeah. Should definitely be aware of the fact that the climbing is really not that easy. <laughs> it's definitely the antithesis of the Appalachian Trail. Like, what wilderness means on the AT compared to what wilderness means on the Hayduke. It's such a different, such a different thing. There's nothing. On other trails, there's very much so like, you get up on something and you're like, oh, there's civilization. And here you get up on something, you're like, that might be a dirt road. <laughs> you're like, Somewhere. possibly 500 miles away. Yeah. <laughs> like,
Yesterday was a long and hot day without water. So as if finding water wasn't difficult enough, sometimes when we do find a good source of water, it's really salty. It's kind of like drinking ocean water. But at least this time there's a couple more sources coming up. We're just coming off of a nice long lunch break in preparation for another descent into the canyons. How's your stoke level for the canyons? Not that great, to be honest with you. <laughs> like four. Four? Yeah. Descending down into these canyons is a descent into the unknown. We just continuously come to these places where it seems like there's no way around. And so we have to kind of fan out and explore and just look for another way down. But that's kind of the point of these whole adventures in the first place is um, an exploration into the unknown. That's also what we like. I think a lot of um, long distance hikers, just the unknown. Just walk and you don't really know what's ahead of you. It's similar in real life, maybe. It's real. It's like if, if you f up, you know, like you could die. Like you can run out of water, especially in the desert here. And so, yeah, the reality of it makes it definitely yeah, more intense, which is great in ways, but also can be terrifying in ways. Yeah, it's not that hard and it's not that scary once you're out here. I don't know. If you've hiked other stuff before, you can probably do it. We just screwed up really bad. After walking down this wash for basically the whole afternoon, we found out that it wasn't the right one. After we left the road, we got sucked down into a canyon that was completely the wrong canyon, and we basically just went backwards for, I don't know, two or three miles. We're both kind of low on water, and we don't see any water coming up for the rest of the day, basically. That's it. This could be our death march. <laughs> kind of seems like everything's going wrong, so it's really easy to go down a negative path, and then you kind of spiral downward. All that does is make it more likely that you're going to make bad decisions and make the situation even worse. So I find it helps to at least try and focus on whatever little positive things that you can find. So this is where it all went wrong. This is the pole that marks where we were supposed to leave the road to drop down into the canyon. And that was about six hours ago. Give me a stoke level. I'm delirious and my stoke is in the negative territory. <laughs> I'm dying. Well, it wouldn't be a great story if something didn't get f***ed up along the way. We made it to this big drop off last night. We had no water left, and we camped. Just saw this morning that the water is right down there. It's so cold this morning. <laughs> yeah, it is freezing. Oh. It's down into like the low 30s, and it's windy, and we're very thirsty. Oh. All right, let's do it. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Just a couple ledge drops and then we get to drink water. These are good steps. Should I do it? Yeah. Mm. You know the gargoyle approach. Oh. Oh. Nice. Yes. There's water down there. Yeah. Just have about four miles till we get to the needles outpost and that'll be our next resupply point it's not quite a town stop all they have is like a restaurant and a little store and maybe some campsites but that's all we really need it'll give us a chance to rest up 
charge everything, and maybe even take a shower. Okay, well, here's the situation. Anybody who watches my blooper reel is gonna know that I'm just not comfortable with a lot of these descents and ascents. When we screwed up a couple of days ago and went down the wrong canyon, it really made me realize that when we're out here in these elements, even the smallest mistake can be magnet, magnified a hundred times. And uh, it made me see how people can really get into a bad, dangerous situation. We hung out here at the uh, outpost and uh, Chelsea, the young lady who works here, has graciously offered to take me back to Moab. The biggest lesson that I take away is if, if we're doing something that is not fun, then there's no point in doing it. Go do something that's fun. Well, just like that, I'm on my own now. We didn't see this coming. Not even Fiddy saw this coming this morning. Once Fiddy and I started looking over the maps for this next section, it was starting to look pretty rough. So it's definitely a bummer that he's not continuing on from here, but I totally understand. There's a popular saying among through hikers, and it's hike your own hike. And if this isn't your kind of hike, then it would be stupid to continue on. Like in the bad times, it's nicer to have a buddy to hike with. Yeah. Yeah, I remembered some hikes in New Zealand where I was pretty down, and then you just keep thinking about all the bad stuff, and then you go lower and lower. Yeah. To be honest, I wouldn't like to hike it alone. If you hike alone, just to know that if something happens, maybe you just lie there for days. One of the things I like the best about the Hayduke is I feel like I'm in the wilderness sometimes. And you're on your own, and if you screw up, you screw up, but no one's there. And that's, it's hard to find. So unless anybody, for some whatever reason, actually watches this, and like, don't come do it, because the best part is that you're not out here. Section 3 was going to be my first experience alone on the Hey Duke, and it wasn't going to be a soft introduction. Over a hundred miles until Hanksville, with long water carries and some really tricky climbs. I was definitely nervous, but I was even more excited. Out here there is plenty of time and no distractions. The only thing you have to keep you company is your own thoughts. And that's something that has become increasingly hard to find in regular life. A lot of people use distractions to keep from thinking about those negative thoughts in the back of their mind. But out here you have the time and the silence to actually mull those things over and you can wrestle with them and figure them out and then put them in their place so they don't come back to haunt you later on. It's good for my mental health to um, take a step back from my life and hike and be disconnected from the things that I worry about any other day. Like challenge yourself and just have to rely on yourself. I try to be a do-it-yourselfer as much as possible and maybe learn things the hard way when there's an easier way. <laughs> the best you can hope to find out here is yourself. And I really believe that that's um, a gift that I've been given with these walks was I got to figure out what I was about because I really was out for a cathartic experience. I just poured my last liter of water into my water bottles. Even the water sources that are marked on our maps are almost always questionable. So you never know exactly when you're going to find water, which means that you have to carry enough to get you to the next two or three sources. And that's a lot of weight. I am out of the butler wash. And what do I find waiting for me up here? Water. 
I am not the only one to be using this water source. There are deer prints all over the place. And that is not very clean water. <laughs> That's the first water I've seen in a day and a half and I'm almost out. So I'm gonna take that and keep going. Maybe I'll find something better, but this makes me pretty happy. <laughs> Today has been a long day. Not because of the miles I got in, but just because of the terrain. These canyons are no joke. They were never made to walk through easily. <laughs> Finding a way out of these canyons is always about choosing between a bad and a worse route. There is never a good route that looks obvious and easy, but that's kind of how life is. You're never presented with the options that you would like to have. All you can do is make the best out of the options that you have. But today I just have a couple more miles left in Dark Canyon and then I'll be ascending out on a pack trail. It's supposed to be really steep and about a thousand foot ascent. The past three or four days have been really challenging. But now that I'm out of the canyons, I have a whole day of road walking ahead of me. This isn't going to be a highlight of the trail by any means, but it gives me a break to kind of reset. Come to one of those places where there is only one way out of this canyon and it's up there. It didn't look doable to me at first, but they said there's some sort of chimney climb. I'm guessing it's right about there. Wilderness to me represents something that we love to throw around a word about in this country and have no knowledge what it really means. That's freedom. Wilderness represents freedom, where you have the freedom to do whatever the hell you want, even if it costs you your life. And you can't do that anywhere else. It's almost the end of the day and I am really tired. I think the miles of this whole section are starting to add up and I'm really starting to feel it in my legs and just my energy overall. I can't really eat enough either because I'm trying to ration my food a little bit so I can stretch it out for the last couple days. But before the day's over I want to get down into here. Then at least I can feel good about quitting for the day. All right. Solid ground. It's dinner time. For dinner tonight we have half a ramen packet. Half a chicken rice packet. Some pink salmon. And to top it all off, Fritos. No hiker meal is complete without Fritos. I've got to say, it's just kind of comforting to be walking next to a river again. Even though this one is called the Dirty Devil River. 
and it's really silty and they say it's full of agricultural waste. <laughs> it doesn't smell very good and it's really cold. But that reminds me of another advantage that traveling through the wilderness can give us. In regular life we really have it so good that we're in temperature controlled rooms all day, we get to sit in comfy chairs, and everything is kind of made for comfort. But that means that we have a very low tolerance for discomfort. And out here you're kind of in a constant level of at least a little bit discomfort. It varies from a little bit to a lot. <laughs> but you're almost never completely comfortable. What that does is that it raises your tolerance for discomfort. And that's valuable all the time because there always will be uncomfortable situations. Well, it's day number eight on this section already, and I am very ready for a town day. It's been a hundred mile section, and this terrain is just so new to me, and there has been so much effort in trying to adapt to it and learn how to navigate through it and all that. I'm just physically and mentally pretty exhausted. You should never forget that it's just, it's just really hard work to do one of these trails. Everything just sounds amazing and right. a lot of fun, but <laughs> not always. At the end, it's just you're hiking for, I don't know, 8 to 12, 14 hours a day. There's a lot of romance that goes along with hiking because people that come back and they relate to stories. And I think that's why a lot of people get involved in hiking. I think that's a lot of reason why um, a lot of these people quit within a week. <laughs> hiking all day, 20 some miles, you know. There's a lot of tedium in that. It's just one footstep at a time. It's slow. You gotta enjoy the moment. Um, you gotta keep your mind occupied and your body has to be willing. Each section seems to have a unique set of challenges and this one presented relentless winds and bad water. Oh, and a rude awakening from a turkey. I have another 100 plus mile section coming up tonight and tomorrow. I'll be going over the Henry Mountains, which I'm really looking forward to. That terrain will be a little bit more familiar to me at least. Sure feels good to be walking through trees again. <laughs> I've been living around trees my whole life and every time I go outside there are always trees. It's that familiarity that kind of brings us comfort in life but it can also be kind of a trap because when you're constantly living in familiarity you're never experiencing anything new so it's a conscious effort that we have to make to get ourselves outside of familiarity that's where all the growth happens I'm really glad I found a way up here but I definitely paid for it <laughs> that was so steep and the air is really thin, and I'm not acclimated to that yet. I think in the past couple days of trail, I've gone from like 4,000 feet to, it's about 11,500 feet up here. I'm gonna need a good long break. So that's kind of cool, you can barely see them way back in the distance, but there's some more mountains way back there. And I think those are the LaSalle's. Those look so close when we started in arches. So that's about how far I've walked. Well, today is going to be a whole lot different than yesterday. Another huge descent, but I have found a couple of cairns already, so that really gives me hope. That takes a lot of the unknown out of the equation. Then you just have to deal with the terrain, and all that takes really is really slow, careful, methodical climbing down. I have to keep reminding myself that I'm out here alone, <laughs> just to take my time.
Later on today, I'll be coming to the junction where about four different alternate routes branch off and I'll have to pick one to get into my next town stop, which is Escalante. Well, my stoke level is pretty low right now. The wind is back and it's just really annoying. I'm running low on water and the water that I do have is pretty bad. It's really alkalaic. I'm pretty sunburnt, so with all those factors combined, I'm not really having a great time right now. But that's just how it goes. There are ups and downs on these trails, and this is just kind of a down. I chose the shorter alternate route to go into Escalante. It's still going to have good scenery, this one, but it's a little bit shorter, so that's partly why I chose it. I know that I have enough water to get me through like maybe half the day and after that I'll be out. I can tell I'm really thirsty now because that little bit of crappy alkaline water that I've left is starting to taste pretty good. <laughs> I've entered something like a famine mindset now that all I want to do is find water. But it's important to remember to still make rational decisions in this sort of a mindset. Water! Yeah! It's a dirty old cow pond, but I don't care. I can't believe I found water out here. This is the place I was trying to get through just so I could find some water in the canyons. But there's a pond out here! Yes! I feel like a different person now. And this water actually tastes really good, believe it or not. Petrified trees, huge ones. And just like that, I'm in town again. Escalante. My feet are soaked and full of sand, but I don't care. I'm in town. Been a lot of ups and downs in this section. But overall, especially the past few days, have been pretty good. So I'm looking forward to what's next, but first of all, I'm looking forward to a good break. And just like that again, I was out of town. This was going to be the longest section on the whole Hayduke. I had 140 miles to get me to my next town stop in Tropic. Between that heavy fact and eight days worth of heavy food in my backpack, I was a little bit distracted, and I went the wrong way twice, almost immediately after starting this section. I took a closer look at the maps and the directions and realized that I had just gone like a mile the wrong way and probably a few hundred feet of elevation that I'm now backtracking. That sucks. <laughs> Well, I just missed another junction. Went the wrong way for about a mile before I realized I was going the wrong way. The map showed the trail ending at that junction, so I assumed the trail would end. But it keeps going. Pretty good start so far to this 140 mile section. The longest one so far on the trail. <laughs> a big journey like this doesn't come without some really, really frustrating parts. And all we can do is just do our best to try and correct them quickly and keep moving. I'm just gonna eat something. 
if there is a straight line route through the landscape, that means that territory has already been very well explored. In unexplored territory, there are a lot of obstacles. It takes longer and it takes more work, but unexplored territory is where all the reward still is. Obviously safety is important. There's no need for unnecessary risk or anything like that. But it seems like we've kind of sanitized everything and nerfed the world in the name of safety. When you place safety as top priority, um, I think you miss out on a lot. But out here there's basically one safety net. I have an SOS button on my GPS tracker. I can push that if I'm dying. <laughs> but that's about it. And that's a pretty good safety net. That's all I really feel like I need. It makes us realize that we can do things that we didn't really think we could. But I think that is a super powerful lesson that is hard to learn anywhere else. Yesterday was a long and slow day. Didn't get in that many miles. I think only about 12. And then today I won't have water for probably at least 15 miles. Even though I was walking by water, it was really, really bad. <laughs> Rogers Canyon. Don't drink the water if you, if you don't have to. <laughs> Not to be graphic, but it was, it was the worst diary I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it felt like a volcano inside me. <laughs> it was really bad. Definitely like on the spectrum of weird things. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nothing too serious. Uh, <laughs> nothing like full Giardia. Giardia is so much worse. Yeah. So yeah. you had it? Yeah. Yeah. Has everyone had it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you really hiked until you've had like crippling, hike destroying Giardia? <laughs> oh. Since there isn't any water coming up for a while, I'm trying to conserve water. And it's kind of just taking a toll on me. I have a bit of a headache and just super low energy. It's actually a lot better than the stuff I have. I'll take it. That is such a relief. For all the white residue on the ground, I'm kind of surprised how good this tastes. Just 20 minutes ago, I was walking down that super steep hill, a bunch of loose rock. It was really hot. I was sweating and super thirsty, and it just kind of sucked. <laughs> and now I have all the clean water I can drink. Good shady spot to sit, and I am so content right now. I'm sure in another hour, I'll be hot and frustrated again. <laughs> In like one day, you can go through every emotion that you would feel in like a lifetime. You could, you know, be terrified, joyous, kind of nostalgic and lonely, and then have deep connections with other people. I've noticed that there are thought patterns that tend to lead me into a good or a bad mood. Then things just compound from there. If I'm in a bad mood out here, then bad things start to happen. That's why it's so important to be aware of what's going on in our mind, to keep an eye on it, because our mind kind of has a mind of its own. And if we aren't aware of what's going on and controlling it in a way, um, things can spiral out of control pretty quickly. The drill register says something about trust the log to the drop. This log doesn't look super trustworthy, but I guess I don't really have a choice. First I have to lower my pack down.
This is going to be another pack dropper. got stuck. That almost put me on my head. <sighs> I think this is the most comfortable I've been in a long time. This is perfect. So this whole time I've been hiking the trail, I haven't seen a single Hey Duke hiker out on the trail actually, and then today I meet three. <laughs> Met up with number two. <laughs> and two other German guys. What were their names? Janis and Lucas. Only met them for about five minutes and they had to keep going to find some water. They said they went 38 miles uh, just to find some water yesterday. There was still a spring coming up when I met them, so they were kind of in a hurry to keep going. Well, I'm on my own again today. Had one full day of hiking with other Heyduke hikers. <laughs> and I'm used to that. I'm always moving a lot slower than everybody else out here because I'm always stopping to take pictures and stuff. things that if I do it I can't do it three times so I'm taking the camera with me so this is how I'm stuck right now oh, this is barely water it's just mud it's sloppy slippery cold mud one puddle down One more to go. Oh, two more to go. And then probably some more after that. At least they put a rope here. Holy crap. This has probably been the coolest part of the whole trail, but it's definitely the worst to walk through. <laughs> So I've been going up this Bull Valley Gorge for a few hours now and this is an alternate off of the original route that I don't have a whole lot of information about. I'm not even sure if I can get through this at the end. There's a possibility that I might just reach a dead end and have to turn around and go through the whole thing again. So I'm going to keep going and hope I find a way out of here. Well, the slot is starting to get smaller. Looks like I'm reaching about the end of it, and I am looking for a way out. <laughs> There's another puddle up there, and I don't want to do that if I don't have to. I think I see a way. I'm free. So far up until now, by the time I get this late into a section, I am very ready to get back into town, get some good food and rest and all that. And I think that's just because the trail has been so hard, it's been kind of beating me down. But now that my body's actually adjusted to the trail, everything is a little bit more effortless. And just that alone puts me in a better mood. Longest section so far, and I'm in no rush to end it. So that's a good sign. 
I met up with number two in Tropic, and we were stuck there for five days because it was snowing in Bryce Canyon. We had our trail legs by now, and they were itching to keep moving. By the time the weather cleared, the walking was effortless. Somewhere around the halfway point on this trail, I think I finally fell into a rhythm. Earlier on in this trail, like basically for the whole first half of this trail, I was kind of overwhelmed just by how different this terrain was and all the challenges that it presented. And I was just experiencing a little bit too much chaos. <laughs> I didn't really realize it at the time, but I wasn't enjoying the hike as much as I should have been. So now that I'm over halfway into this trail, I have enough experience to kind of balance things out. And I think that's one of the reasons that makes a through hike so valuable. It gives us that opportunity, the time and the freedom to experiment and figure this stuff out for ourselves. Long hikes are a transformative experience and you apply those, those that changed perspective to the rest of your life. Huh? With this only being about a 60 mile section, this has felt really short. <laughs> felt like I just got out here. And this is the first time I'm actually kind of wishing that the section wouldn't end so soon. Just next to the border of Utah and Arizona, there's a feature called the Wave. It's very restricted, and they have a lottery system that only gives out 10 permits per day. There must have been 50 people in the BLM office that morning, but somehow number two and I got picked. Once I reached Arizona, I hopped on the Arizona Trail, and I followed that all the way to the Grand Canyon. The Arizona Trail is much more established than the Hayduke, and it felt like a real luxury to be walking on a trail all day. Right off the bat, I get a picnic table and a gazebo to sit under, some nice shade. I've got a big climb up the Kaibab Plateau after this. I kinda hope it's not this nice the whole way. I found that life is a lot like hiking. It's just way more complicated and our problems have been abstracted into things that are kind of hard to break down. But out here things are simple. The problems are simple, the solutions are obvious, it's just a matter of doing them. It would be nice if things were that easy in regular life, but then we wouldn't have all the amenities that we do. So it's kind of just a price that comes with the territory, I think. Out in the wilderness, our resources are so limited that when problems arise, 
we're forced to confront them right away. The consequences are much more immediate and a lot of the time that really sucks. <laughs> but it's a much quicker process and then the problems are solved. You rely on yourself. You have to make a decision. If you make a wrong decision, you have to try to find a way out of, of that. So, and in normal life, you don't have this. Wilderness can teach you that you can be very self-sufficient and relying on yourself and it can make you feel yeah, more empowered in other aspects of life. After all these experiences, you just realize how strong your mind is. Just another day on the Hayduke Trail. Climbing up this tiny little notch. It's exactly as wide as my backpack. This stuff used to be really daunting before, but now I'm just kind of used to it. <laughs> I just have to take my time, be careful, but it's kind of fun. Wow. <laughs> so we just screwed up a little bit. Um, our last water source was Dog Lake about three miles ago. And it wasn't very good water, so we didn't take very much from there because there was another spring coming up that was supposed to be really nice, Crystal Springs. So we were gonna plan on really tanking up there. And of course it's dry. And there was really no good water sources for another 19 miles after this. There's still a tiny bit of snow left up here. So this is kind of what it's come down to. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we went and got snow. Now we found water immediately. <laughs> yeah. False alarm. <laughs> like less than half a mile later, there's a whole nother water source. Wow, and it's not day. on the map. We had no idea it was here. <laughs> you don't have to get that much water here. I'm sure there's water at Sourdough. Well, yeah, I'm we'll rely sure. on that. I just grab a bottle here. Yep, good idea. We're kind of sold an illusion that if we do everything right, suffering can just be eradicated from life. But out here in the wilderness, it's a completely different philosophy because I found that suffering is just impossible to get rid of. But that's not really the point. The point is that we find things to do that make the suffering worthwhile. The ups make the downs worth it. And if you don't have any downs, then there are no ups. You're just walking on flat ground the whole time, which is what I'm doing right now. I've been road walking for about seven miles. The whole time it hasn't really been horrible, but at the same time, it's been pretty boring. This very flat and plain road is taking me to the Grand Canyon. And obviously there's gonna be a lot of extremes there. That's the part I'm looking forward to. Um, I came out of the Grand Canyon the first time with with kind of two ideas about what that was about. And one was, the Grand Canyon wants you dead. <laughs> and it's your job not to become so. The other thing the Grand Canyon, and I would say wilderness, has taught me is what's truly important in the world. And I know I came out of the Grand Canyon, um, and we did have some, some rough adventures in there. Um, but uh, with the idea that what's really important in the world is just some food and some water, and a hug from somebody you care about. And everything else is a bonus. And you keep that in context, it's pretty easy to be happy. This is our first taste of the Grand Canyon. I know, it's like, how the f are we getting down there? <laughs> This is going to be a very long, slow, 
tedious and probably dangerous descent. <laughs> I have about 5,000 feet of elevation to descend before I get to the Colorado River. There's one spot on the map that mentions something about rocks like ball bearings and a thousand foot fall on the other side. <laughs> These long descents can get really tedious. Very slow, step by step, only like six inches at a time. If I start taking bigger steps, that's when the trail reminds me to slow down because that's when I start slipping. Flat ground, yeah, feels good. I could just feel the temperature increasing as we descended started out being about 50 degrees up on top. It's about 95 now. That's the Colorado River. That looks nice and cold. There's a whole bunch of rafters down there, which is a good sign because tomorrow we're going to be relying on them to ferry us across the Colorado River. Ooh, it's cold. I told ya. <laughs> yeah. It's not nearly hot enough. <laughs> yeah, you can see why they don't recommend trying to swim across. Oh my god. The question is, do you have cold beer? <laughs> nope. That's the question for you. Yeah, we were on a few up here. We were going to cook a really got a right? full boat. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, they do a great yeah. sauce. I mean, I've heard pork chops and steak and well, corn. It was spaghetti, but it was homemade. Oh. No matter how you look at it, that worked out great. <laughs> We got a ride across the Colorado River and free beer. All it takes is a tiny little patch of shade, but it makes a pretty good break spot. A lot of what the wilderness teaches us, it kind of just comes down to being aware of our own thoughts and having a little bit of control over them. Humans are very habitual creatures and we develop patterns in order to save work. But since there's so much variability in the wilderness, it forces us to approach each task as its own problem. At first it might be kind of overwhelming and very mentally draining to confront each problem individually instead of running a predetermined pattern of behavior. But over time that approach itself becomes a pattern and then it becomes a little bit more automatic. And this approach can deal with a lot wider variety of problems. It takes a lot more information into account and I think it produces a lot better outcomes. The south rim of the Grand Canyon is where all the crowds are at. 
I could tell I was getting closer because the trails were getting nicer and the people were starting to smell good. I could smell their deodorant or shampoo from 50 feet away sometime. After reaching the top, I still had two more trips in and out of the Grand Canyon ahead. All right, we're coming down the Bright Angel Trail, the very popular Bright Angel Trail for our second descent into the canyon. Second out of three. Now this is trail magic if I've ever seen it. Yeah, <laughs> cookies. I don't know who does that or why. They're covered in ants, but we're gonna eat them. Today I'm actually going to be getting back out of the canyon and going to the north rim. This is a rim to rim hike that most people talk about when they do the Grand Canyon. Made it to the top. I'm at the north rim now. And number two should be waiting for me up here somewhere at the general store. Then it's a pretty long section coming up, about 110 miles to Colorado City. And the last leg of the Grand Canyon. This should be interesting. <laughs> for this third and last ascent into the canyon, it's definitely going to be the roughest of the three. Looks like there's going to be some really thick and thorny brush and then some drops into these things called plunge pools. I'm not even sure what to expect from that, but they're saying that the water could be chest deep. So everything's gonna get wet and really cold. But I don't have to deal with that till tomorrow, so I'm not gonna worry about that yet. So two nights ago when we were in the Grand Canyon, it was about 80 degrees all night. Last night, now that we're up on top, it's 18 degrees this morning. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting below freezing tonight. Me neither. <laughs> Frost on everything. I'll shuffle on off and try to keep warm. Yeah, I'm gonna be slow to get moving. <laughs> Okay, see you later. All right, see ya. Well, today's the day that we've been anticipating for a while. This might be the hardest part of the trail. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It's yeah. a big rumor. <laughs> yeah, so far it's kind of hard to tell how hard things actually are based on people's descriptions. Sometimes they exaggerate and sometimes they don't exaggerate enough. <laughs> but this place has been really hyped up. People are saying it took them like nine hours to go about five miles. So it's going to be slow going. down 
Normally the only other sign of hay dukers on the trail is their footprints. Here they left some blood. Okay, so we got a canyon inlet from the right there. It's got to be this. We're in the spot. For a back track to Karen and follow faint trail up scree slope and then contour along below the cliff to the ridge. You can follow. I don't. We got to get up there. This is going to be one of those figure it out moments. Came down that one, and now here's another one. They said there would be dozens of these drops. Right now we're encountering one about every hundred feet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, goodbye, pack. Now you're committed. This is it. What, we, what we've been anticipating for a long time. Yeah. Doing it slow. Yep. Well, when you're in it, <laughs> it's like crotch deep. Okay. It's not terrible. I've been through mud this deep before. I can get out. <laughs> How's the next one look? Drop. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, I'm not going down as fast as I thought I would be. Yeah, it's a pretty controlled slide, it looks like. Yeah. Except for here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for the pack on method. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Right when you get crotch deep, <laughs> that's when you feel it. <laughs> It's kind of funny how your imagination can really blow things out of proportion when you think about things for a long time. Number two and I had been talking about those plunge pools for weeks. Then when we got to them, it really wasn't that big of a deal and they were pretty fun. There's definitely still some challenges coming up, but those are kind of the last big unknown on this trail. We weren't really sure what to expect with those. choice we have to go down the river
ended up sleeping in an extra hour and a half today. Number two left is the normal time because he has a finish date that he's trying to get to Zion by. I don't really have any time constraints like that, so I don't have any reason to hurry. Chances are I probably won't see him or any other Hey Duke hikers until the end of the trail. We've got about a week left and it looks like I'll be on my own. I think today is the hottest day so far on the trail. My watch says it's 112 degrees. I've seen it as high as 125 when it's just sitting in the sun. Even though I have sunscreen on, it actually feels like the air is burning my skin. <laughs> I can't stand in one spot too long because I can feel the heat from the rocks coming up through my shoes. When I'm stressed out because of external factors, I find that I just don't think through things very clearly. Now I'm just coming off of a nice long lunch break and I'm feeling pretty good even though it's still ridiculously hot. <laughs> I've got a, another maybe five miles of this stupid boulder hopping which is really slow, tedious work but it's also pretty dangerous and not a good idea to do if you're stressed out. All it takes is one slip and that could be a broken ankle. I took my break, jumped in the river a bunch of times, got back down to baseline and now I'm feeling comfortable again so I can take my time through this boulder field and hopefully not break a leg. From Deer Creek Falls to Kanab Creek, it's like seven miles, and it's the last part of the Inner Gorge. Um, get on a boat. I'll tell you that. Get on a boat. It's like trying to traverse this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's steep, but way bigger boulders. It's all just gnarly talus. It's pitched, and it's the only place I've ever got blisters on my feet. I'm so happy to be walking in flat ground again. That boulder field was just horrible yesterday. I know you'll get to experience the whole thing in less than a minute, but those seven miles took me about eight hours. But it's over, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I probably shouldn't say this, but I think that was the last of the hard parts on this trail. just tanked up on six liters of water. My pack is nice and heavy again. But the way I look at it is that that's how much peace of mind weighs. And that's not easy to come by out here. And so begins another long, hot, and dry road section. I've got about 40 miles to get me to Colorado City and it's almost entirely on roads. I think there is one water source in between here and there. Tomorrow I think I'm going to try and do a 30 mile day and that should get me to Colorado City.
Well, I did it. I got my 30 mile day in yesterday. Wasn't even planning on doing that when I started, but I was making pretty good progress all day. I had to walk into the night, but it was a full moon and with this wide open space, it's actually pretty easy to see at night. It was pretty nice walking. I've only got about 23 to get into Colorado City. So it's gonna be a long and pretty uneventful day on the barren Arizona Strip. Colorado City lies just below that mountain range over there. So I get to look at that the whole day. <laughs> Probably looks a little bit out of place to be sitting on a nice bench outside of a liquor store. <laughs> Definitely feel a lot different when I start to get into civilization start to feel more like a homeless person than a person on a big adventure. <laughs> I'm still three miles outside of Colorado City. When I get there, that'll make it a 25 mile day, all on roads. The last seven miles have been on highway. <laughs> Including today and yesterday, that'll be 55 miles that I've done in two days, which is by far the most I've ever hiked in two days. And this will be my last town stop on the trail. From here, it's only a couple days until Zion, and that's it. Not sure how I feel about that yet. You create memories and they last a lifetime, and you know, what do you really remember as you get older, you know? And it's things like this that I, I think about all the time as a lot of my adventures where I've been, places I've been, people I've met, learning different cultures, how different people live. Um, all that's important to me. The western terminus of the Hey Duke was just three days away. I assumed it would be simple, but I should have known better than to assume that on the Hey Duke. Heading out of my last town stop on the Hey Duke. I'm just walking out of Colorado City in Hilldale right now. And this is going to be a nice walk because I just picked up some frozen yogurt. <laughs> There's a little dairy stand on the way out. So I'm going to enjoy this walk out. It's Tadpole in Minnow City. been a pretty pleasant day walking down the east fork of the Virgin River. I've just been walking in the river most of the day and it's been pretty easy up until now. I don't know if I'm reading the guidebook wrong or something but I don't think there was even any mention of this waterfall and I have to figure out a way to get around it. After looking around for a while there's this crack in the wall over here with a cairn This is the way I'm going to go out, <laughs> at least I'm going to try that. And then I'm going to have to go all the way back down to the river. We'll see how this goes. Just came up here, and it looks like I have to go up this. That's my only way out and around this waterfall. Okay, I'm up on top. Now I just have to find a way back down. I'm getting the feeling that this isn't the right way to go, but I'm not really sure what the right way to go is. Well, that was the hardest thing I've had to do in a long time. That's why I didn't film it. 
That is definitely not the way I was supposed to go, but I got myself into a situation where that was kind of the only way I could go. That was pretty sketchy. I had to lower my pack a couple times. Some loose rocks and really steep drops. But whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm back down at the river and I got past that waterfall. So I'm back on track. All right, apparently this is my route out of the Virgin River. They call this Fat Man's Misery. I think it's gonna be pretty narrow up in here. I'm really hoping these pools don't get much deeper. Oh, they're already pretty deep. I'm gonna have to take my pack off and hold it above my head. I have not had to do that on this whole trail so far. Well, this is not how I planned on spending my last night on the trail. I am feeling pretty defeated right now. It's the second to last day. I thought I was just going to hike through and then finish tomorrow. Hopefully I still can finish tomorrow, but I've got about 15 more miles and I have no idea how long it's going to take to get out of this canyon. I'm going to have to find my own way out because the Fat Man's Misery route did not work. The pools were just too deep. It was over my head at one point. So I have to find another side canyon or something to get out of here because these walls are vertical in most places. I'll just have to figure it out. That's how this whole trail has been. I can do it tomorrow. I'm an idiot. I'm pretty sure the slot that I was trying to go up last night was not Fat Man's Misery. But it was like maybe 30 feet away from Fat Man's Misery. I wasn't actually supposed to go up the slot, I was just supposed to go up the hill next to it. Yep, this is definitely it. I'm both very relieved and kind of pissed off that I wasted so much time when I should have just found this right away. Oh my god. I'm so glad to be out of this canyon. That was stupid. That was so stupid. I need to have a Snickers bar or something to celebrate. I'm still not going the right way. I just found out that I have to be on that side. There are even footprints going up this trail. I don't know where it goes, it just kind of dead ends up here. This is crushing me. I haven't had this much difficulty on anything else so far. And this should be simple. I don't know why it's so hard. Well, I'm directly above the slot canyon I was trying to climb up last night. All I have to do is get to that side. But I can't jump this. <laughs> so I have to go back down, figure out the right way again. So right down there is the slot that I tried to take to get out yesterday. That didn't work. Right next to it is a little scree route that I just climbed up figured out I was on the wrong side. I had to climb all the way back down there. And this time, I'm pretty sure this one is Fat Man's Misery. At least I hope so. That's it, I'm positive this is it. There's footprints everywhere up here. I even recognize some of them. I'm on the right side of the canyon, and I'm up here. Too bad I already ate my victory Snickers. <laughs> That's all right, I'm just gonna keep going. This wasted so much time, I could have been probably 10 miles ahead on the trail by now. I think it's about 12 more miles. That's all I have left of the Hey Duke. 
thinking back to my first through hike on the Pacific Northwest Trail, I wasn't really sure how I'd feel at the end of it. There wasn't really a overwhelming wave of emotion that came over me, nothing like that. And I realized that everything that makes a through hike worth it is in between the beginning and the end. Reaching the end of the hike doesn't really mean anything other than the hike is over. So while I'm really looking forward to getting to the terminus, I know that once I get there it's going to be some mixed feelings, both positive and negative, and I think they kind of balance each other out. All it means is that this chapter is over and it's time to start a new one. Something I've learned from talking to other hikers is that we're all out here for our own different reasons. Wherever the motivation comes from though, the goal always seems to be the same. To do something meaningful and on our own terms. For us, the wilderness provides the time and space to find that meaning, but it doesn't have to take place out here. The wilderness experience shows us exactly what matters and why we need it. These values are unique to the individual, and they lead to a meaningful life. The path will not be well defined, and you will get lost, but when the destination is meaningful, you will have the strength to keep going. With only three and a half miles to go, I'm tempted to just keep moving, but with a view like this, I just can't pass that up. It won't make any difference if I finish half an hour earlier or not anyway. I think that's it, the weeping rock. Not the most impressive thing to see on the finish, but I guess it's more about what it symbolizes and how it looks. That's it for now. I guess it's time to go home. <laughs>